What's going on, Axie fam? Elijah here back with another video. Today, I have one I'm very excited to share with you. And joining me is Theban or 1437. Welcome back to the channel, my friend. Well, got to be back. It's always fun talking Axie here. So the Meditate team back at it again. Theban is a fellow professional Axie player over at MT8. He also has a YouTube channel where he puts out amazing Axie Infinity content. So I'm going to leave a link in the description below for you to go check him out and subscribe to his channel. So we're going to be covering the ever so popular double plant bird today. This thing is flooding the arena. It has been since last season, and it's just because of how powerful it is. Is. It's fairly straightforward in terms of the play style. What are your initial thoughts on plant plant bird compositions? So I think there are multiple different plant plant bird composition. I think the one that you're going to be showcasing today is probably my most favorite one because uh, it's very well rounded. I don't think it was a strong last season because of the uh, poison guys, at least this variation, the Biden's variation was a little bit stronger because of the poison teams, but it's such a easy to execute lineup. And it's so punishing for the opponent when they don't time their attacks properly and avoid the big shields. Uh, that's why I think double plant bird is probably the most solid team for new players, especially, or not even new players, just players who want to reach that 2200 uh, MMR point so they can farm that max SLP. Yeah, I would agree with you there. Let's break it down. The bird here is a classic hair bird. They call it the Indes bird. My name gets thrown in there too, but he was definitely the first one to run it. It's hair, eggshell, peacemaker, balloon, super strong. You have card draw, which you often get the bonus from because of how fast we are, 59 speed, balloon to make the opponent miss. It also serves as a zero cost to avoid stuns. Eggshell, now this is the key component in the build. Learning how to play this card really well is not only extremely powerful, it's one of the most fun things that you can do in Axie Infinity to draw your opponent away in a critical moment of the game. Hopefully we get to showcase that today. And it's just balanced. Cards, damage, yep. beast damage. It's just what you're looking for in a phenomenal Axie, am I right? Exactly. I love this bird. Um, if it has Tri-Feather, it's also good, but a little bit rare. I would say if you want a different bird if you can't really afford this one you can just get one with a lot of firepower with an eggshell tri feather combo in general or mm. even a post fight bird to be able to uh, replace this one because this one has insane amount of control with that balloon and um, at the same time because it's so good it can be pricey Yes, exactly. So now let's look at the midline position. There are a lot of different ways to run this. I prefer the immortal tank with leaf bug, bone sail, hot butt, and zigzag. What this offers me is all of the options. I get card draw, durability, I get to heal up, energy, and leaf bug, and I make it difficult for my opponent to execute because I have hot butt to turn off their mouth cards. Very effective against things like Chomp and really any Axie you're up against, you're going to have some benefit from having Hot Butt in your hand. Many times I have 2v1'd my opponent. I've 2v1'd, uh, you know, double an enemy bird teams by just saving up, outplaying, waiting for the killing attack. This Axie is very difficult to kill, hence the name Immortal Tank. <laughs> yeah, for my first uh, double plant bird team, this was the plant that I used. Like I said, in the last season, against poisons this wasn't so good because you don't have that way to remove the poisons but because they've been nerfed this has pretty much gone up the ladder in terms of the immortal plants the only one that can trump this one is going to be the gravelant version and this one is so much easier to play so you just have to click leaf bug hot butt zigzag or like leaf butt hot butt and bone sale every turn and then the next yeah. turn you get like three cards with your leaf bug four card plays you draw a card if they kill your shield it's Easy just clap. amazing yeah. Amazing. And then up front, I'm going with this lately. Now, it's something I got for fairly cheap as soon as the patch hit 0.11. And now the prices on all of these are quite a bit higher, especially the ones that have Sandal or Scarab on the back. Buzz Buzz, I think, is the third alternative and probably a little bit cheaper. And Cattail, at least at the highest rankings, is amazing right now because of all of the bugs that are out there, the mechs that are out there. You're getting insane value from having this on your plant. On the way, up if you're facing more aquas and birds at the lower levels or double an enemy bird for instance then maybe you want hot butt instead and if you are looking for a more budget option that's totally fine hot butt cactus pumpkin serious even you could go like the ultimate classic 
uh, tank. Or I think you were recommending with the damage also was quite affordable. What was it like? Hot butt scarab. Yeah, hot, one of hot butt scarab sandal. Uh, serious. It's actually quite cheap. Point one one. Exactly. Either Cactus or the Beach version, just a full out damage plan at the front. Because with this team, what you want to do is you want to store up the midliners cards. You don't want to use too many of the midliner cards. Maybe the hot butt with the leaf bug, that yeah. could be good. But other than that, Wait. you just want the frontliner to delete their frontliner. Exactly. Exactly. Oh boy. Theban. Are you no. kidding? You see this team? It's not bad though. In this yeah. situation, our bird is very clutch and very important to keep alive because he can four card the backline aqua. It's easy clap in the 1v1, right? Mm -hmm. So this is actually quite a good matchup. I just said, oh God, because you're facing this a lot these days and it's really <laughs> quite frustrating. Yeah. So we've got mass discards and big damage from the Pocky here and having two bugs. What does this do by itself? Um, Somewhere around one. 90 something i think without the risky bonus without the bonus yeah on a plant it's just it's just a lot a lot of damage and uh, yeah. i just like to mention it's your build <laughs> yep. you're evil for creating this one i'll tell you that so i think right out of the gate uh pretty clear play get hair value should break the snail if he puts mm -hmm. that up and then the cactus value is massive here as well we're yeah. going to lose these cards probably to discards, but not the end of the world. And we're at least going to put some big damage on the bug. Yeah, the very good thing here is that he did not play the snail shell. He played the fish snack. Um, so that's out of the way. Unfortunately, we did not have a cat tail. These bug guys, normally they always use the like, cards on turn one so yeah. they can get value. Oh, this is a really, really important moment here to take note of, right? So what just happened? We saw three energy used in round one. He only has two this round. So Theban, why don't you tell him what that means? Well, that egg, sh egg is only going to bring a maximum of two energy worth of damage onto this bird. So no matter how we look at it, there isn't enough damage on the opponent's side to be able to kill our bird, even if all the attacks go to it. Exactly. I think I'll follow up with the buzz buzz. I could do the balloon, but maybe I'm going to hold on to that for the second bug here, potentially. Okay, mm -hmm. so it looks like we're going to have just enough to kill this thing, which is nice. And here's what we're talking about. We take 127 and a fish snack, but we're alive and well, and we delay the game. We buy time. We kill the bug. Our plant is still there. We're in good shape, guys. Perfect. Okay, we haven't seen any fish snacks out of this. We've just seen the sandals. Actually, I don't even think we've seen any discards, right? He did play some sandals only. Yeah, I, I do think he's thinking about us passing because this is a high MMR level player. So it could be interesting to get like a hair and a disguise plus drain bite here just to get an extra energy for the next turn as well. And this should deal some damage, but it's, it's going to be like a tough call to make here. I think I want the hair value, honestly. And I think getting three energy, like you said, is quite nice. I'm going to go for it and hopefully not get the peace treaty discarded is kind of the main thing. Mm. All right. So it looks like he's going to go with one fish snack. This isn't the end of the world, though. It's a fish snack and I think a parasite. Um, we have enough cards in our hand that we should be fine in terms of not losing anything too important. Really, it's just the peace treaty, which he actually does end up taking out. Kind of sad. Well, with two energy, he can't kill our plant. I think it's a good round. We're going to get hit with pincers, but I think it's ultimately another good round to pass. Yeah, that, that seems fair. And also in this situation, the immortal plant is pretty good against the aqua too. Um, if amazing, amazing yeah. against the aqua. We're in really good shape in that 1v1. So I think I'm going to just chill. Okay, kind of a no nothing round for him. He does a little bit of damage. Now, the thing is that we have for us uh, next turn is the egg outplay, which now we got to do it. So what I'm going to do is do egg balloon to get rid of the stun because we're definitely going to see another fish snack. So this is a lot of bird damage. And then on top of that, I'm going to start to heal up. I think maybe disguise heal. And do I throw a hot button just to be safe? He's going to get 100 shield from that fish snack. So he's going to sit at about 450 plus HP here. So this kind of makes sense. Yeah. I don't even know if this is place. enough. We'll have to find out. Okay, only 99 shield. We're good. We're good. We're good. So here we go. We're going to get to draw him away. This is egg, egg textbook 101 play style here, okay? You just manipulate the hell out of your opponent. It drives them crazy. You can see here we're making him do what we want him to do. And now we heal up. We're heading into an amazing 1v1, aren't we? Mm -hmm. And I guess one thing we should have uh, also realized that he already played those sandals early and the parasite. So he only really had a hundred shield left. 
because it was only t- round five, the chance of him redrawing his card was very unlikely. Exactly. That would have been the perfect way to actually think about it in terms of calculating the damage you needed is keep track of those early cards that you see. Does he just hit two? All right. He, he, I believe he didn't play a Nemo there. I kind of lost track with that last thought process, but yeah. There oh yeah, is, he's in Nemo. trouble. He's in big trouble. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is going to feel so good next turn. The giant break, but he does have the risky fish plus the... Hockey, which, which is, is a lot of damage. A lot of damage for sure. So we're going to have to be careful, but I think, oh yeah, this is, this is going to be like way too much for him to have to deal with. We actually don't even need that much damage because he can't really put any shield up. I'd rather have as much shield as possible. There yeah, it it's is. a three card combination, but we're going to be just fine. Against but look at this damage. This it's, is big be damage. Huge. Mm, it, it, it's big damage. It's big damage. It was close. It was close. I mean, the double bug damage is crazy. You're a sicko. You're a sick person, Theban, for coming up with this. I'll tell you what. I don't appreciate it. I don't appreciate you putting these nasty builds out there in the arena. It's a very fun build. I mean, my scholar, he actually managed to hit top two with his team uh, in the last season. This season is a, yeah, a little bit worse because there's not as many poison teams. But at the same time, it's still an incredibly strong uh, composition. Absolutely. So I think there was a lot of really good stuff in that game. We got to see egg out play. We got to see paying attention to what cards our opponent has used. Remember that the deck resets after round five in most games. What that means is no player can play more of two of the same card before that happens. So if you see him play two sandals in round one, that generally means he won't have another one of those until after round five. Pay attention to that stuff when it comes to energy steals or poisons or yam, all these cue cards that are important. This is what's going to separate you from the pack and turn you into an elite player. I think that was a really good example to actually end this video on. As always, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Twitter. It's at Elijah underscore MT8. And make sure you go check out Theban's YouTube channel and subscribe to him as well. I think this build is phenomenal for climbing the ranks. You might run into trouble at the very top i'm talking like top 100 and 200 rankings any closing thoughts on the plant plant bird combination theban i think this is a legitimate comp especially for climbing up to maybe the 1k rank area uh, there's a lot of room for error with this midline plant you know your bird egg manipulation the onus is always on your opponent to try to make the correct place and get the reads on you because of all that control that you have and i feel like most of the teams in the lower brackets they tend to play double aquas or they have like some of these termi builds and th- this team is going to be very strong against that it's going to be very easy for you to be able to get max amount of SOP as long as you can execute this team. Absolutely. So on that note, we are going to sign off. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.